what's happening everyone welcome back to the workshop now in this video we're going to make a nice little pencil case now we have a couple of reasons for this number one a bunch of you guys have messaged me and asked me can i do a more basic woodworking project so the box is the basis for everything we do in woodwork so we'll do a little pencil case second reason is i've been uh, doing some sketches lately around my desk so i've got myself a couple of sketch pads which is always a good idea to do especially if you're into making stuff to sketch down a few ideas and i wanted just a nice little pencil case to keep all the pencils in on my desk where i do my editing for my videos it's just a nice place to sit down jot down a few ideas so i thought a little pencil case there would tidy the desk up a small bit and last but not least uh, my wonderful wife for my 40th birthday got me this bad axe large tenon saw and i've been dying for looking for an excuse to use this so i've just got it the other day so i'm going to put this into use in this video so i'll give you a look at this as this video progresses you'll see it in action so i have a piece of spotted beach here that i planked up about a year ago now this was taken from the river so it's a nice piece so we're going to try and get the entire pencil case from this board so i want to use my tenon saw now this large tenon saw to split this board in half to resaw it it's going to be completely uh, 100 a hand tool project and we'll try and keep it nice and simple because it's going to be a basic enough woodworking project so without further ado let's turn this board into a pencil case Okay, so our first port of call then is to split this board in half. Now this board is already pre-dimensioned, so it's always a, it's already a square piece of stock. It's actually the board that I used, I believe, in my video on how to prepare stock by hand. So I have a full video on that if you want to check it out before you get started with this video. But like I say, this is already pre-dimensioned, so we want to split it in half. So let's mark this with our marking gauge all the way around now, and we can begin splitting this in half. Okay, let's find the center of this board. Now I've just set my marking gauge to roughly what I think is halfway. I'm just going to put a little line there and come from the other side and see if that matches up now that does actually match up exactly which is nice so it was a pretty good guess so i know i'm center now if i wasn't center what i would do let's just make it not center just to show you so pull it back a small bit mark a line there then mark from this side now you can see there's a gap between those two lines so i know my center point is actually in the middle of the two of them now so i can adjust adjust my marking gauge to dead center of those two lines. We can mark again, and we are bang on. So now we know we have that set to center. That's a nice little way to find the center of a board, nice and easy. So we can scribe this line all the way around from our face side, which I already have marked on this board. So we'll scribe this line all the way around, and now we can split it. Okay, now that I have my line all the way around, I'm just gonna run my pencil in that marking gauge line, just to make it a little bit more visible. Okay, there we go. We have a nice kind of line all the way around that now, just to make it easier for sawing. So let's get on and do that. Okay, we're trying, going to try and split this board in half using this large tenon saw to do it. Now, it's not exactly the ideal saw for this, but it's pretty deep. We have a nice pretty, pretty depth to the spine, so we should be able to do it. I'll have to come at it from both sides, but we're going to start at the corner. That's the best place to start and try and join these two lines and once we have these two lines running straight we can get a little bit deeper into the board and we can work our way down the board then um, it's just a good way of getting a nice straight cut so we want to follow two lines at once so i'm going to start in the corner just make sure that i follow both these two lines as much as possible And once I've established my cut and I'm following these two lines, the, the saw should just keep following the on down. So we get this one nice and deep. <laughs> saw is making short work of this. So we're pretty straight, so that's good. Let's continue. Okay, now that I've reached the spine of the saw, I'm just going to straighten this up in the vise. And we're going to continue on down this side. Now we have two lines to keep our saw nice and straight, so let's continue on. Okay, so I'm just going to continue around my board, just joining up my corners, making sure that all my cuts are lining up. And then I can chop straight down through the board. So hopefully it should be pretty good. Now this board is pretty punky here. Like I say, it's spalted beach, so it's very, very soft in places. But 
the saw is tracking pretty true. I have to say, it's an absolute pleasure to use. So any uh, discrepancy in this is not the saw. It's definitely me. Okay, I'd say we are now through. A little bit deeper than that saw is capable of going, but I just really wanted to test it out. But uh, there we go. Now we have a bit of planing work to do on that because I had to come at it from multiple sides and it's not the best, I would say. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something I need to practice is resawing boards with hand saws. That's a kind of a large tenon saw, so you really want a large hand saw for doing this. But uh, if you come out of corner to corner and line up your cuts, you won't go too far wrong. So now we have two boards. We have to plane these down and thickness them up. So let's do that. Okay, so I have kind of two face sides already established for when I pre-dimensioned this board. So now what I need to do is thickness these again. So because my saw cuts aren't great, um, this board isn't, it needs a bit of work. So set the marking gauge to the lowest point on the board. I'm going to scribe a line all the way around and then we can work to that. And again, we don't have to be 100% accurate here. We just want to get it pretty good because at the end of the day, it's only a pencil case, but um, we'll get it as close as possible. So I'll do that with this board, and I'll also do that with this board, and then we'll start planing. Yes, yeah, so I'm just taking this thing down to my marking gauge line all around, and just checking for flat the whole way down the board. We're almost there. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. Just get it pretty close. So it's only a pencil case, and that's looking pretty good the whole way down. Now, I'll dimension or flatten the other board, and uh, we'll jump back in and we'll get this dimensioned up. Okay, so we have our two boards more or less prepared, so they're roughly to 10 millimeters. Um, so we're gonna use them. We actually have a book match here as well, so we might try and incorporate that into the design. But for now, I just wanna get the ends of this board squared up. So I have a face uh, edge marked. I'm gonna put that against my fence and just get the ends just squared up on the shooting board. We always want to keep our face edge against the bench, so we don't want to do this and then do this. It's always the face edge that goes against the fence, so we want to flip it over. You can see you have a nice big gap there, so we want to get that down. There we go, it's a nice square side on that board, and the same with this one, so face the edge against our fence. And again, you can see you have a nice big gap here, so. Just walk that down, do this side. That side is pretty good. I've actually got quite a punky bit of wood here, so that's very spongy. Like I say, this is pulled from the river. Okay, now we have our two boards ready to go, so we're gonna try and get all our components out of both of these boards. So let's mark this up. Okay, let's get our boards marked out now. So we're gonna try and get the best out of this. We have two knots, but I'm gonna try and maybe avoid these knots if I can. I've also got two checks down here. So it's gonna be nice and small. It's just gonna be a nice, small, handy little pencil case. It's just gonna hold a few pencils, a pencil sharpener and an eraser or rubber. And uh, we're gonna try and get the sides and the two ends out of one side of this board, and we're gonna get the top and the bottom out of it, out of the other half. So I've kind of decided on 60 millimeters deep, which is about just under two and a half inches. So get my marking gauge, I'm just gonna mark that. So that's gonna be a side and an end, and I'm gonna do the same on this one. So we get a side and an end out of this. Okay, so we want to cut this now and uh, square this back up. It's going to be nice and small, nice and handy. And then we want to put a miter the edges of these. So let's get on and do that. Okay, you're going to use my big tenon saw for this as well because I really like using it. And uh, we're going to just cut, say a couple of millimeters away from this line. Now, depending on how good you are with a saw, the closer you can get to this line. I'm not the greatest with the saw in the world. I definitely need practice. So I'm gonna stay back. We have plenty of material to spa spare. So I'm gonna stay back about three millimeters from that line. And we can work to that line on our shooting board, which is the beauty of the shooting board. So we can give ourselves a little bit of leeway here. We don't have to be too exact. And we can just run on down beside our line. Just like that. Now we've allowed ourselves 
plenty of spare here that we can work this back down with the shooting board. So let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna work back to this line on our shooting board. Be nice and fast. There we go, nice straight edge. Do the same with this one. Okay, there we go. Now, I want to dimension these two exactly. So we can put the two of them together, just like that. Make sure they're against the fence. We can just take a nice pass down the two of these. Just one or two strokes, that'll do. And now they are identical. Happy days. Okay, so now we have our two pieces dimensioned up. These are essentially the sides and the ends of our pencil case. Now I've just marked a line on the inside top and bottom, so I know that that is the inside top and bottom, and we wanna put a rebate now in this, a rebate or a rabbit. Uh, I think a dado goes across the grain, am I right in saying that? And a rabbit or rebate goes the length of the grain. Let me know in the comments, I could be getting that absolutely wrong. But we're gonna slide in our base, and we also want a sliding lid in this. So we're gonna cut a six mil or quarter inch uh, rebate or rabbit into this now. So I'm just gonna measure five millimeters up from the end. So that's just under a quarter of an inch. Just gonna scribe with my marking gauge. Top and bottom. And we cut the rebates in this before we actually cut our boards and separate them into their sides and our ends. So there we go. So nice and small, lightweight pencil case. That's what we're aiming for here. And all with hand tools. Okay, let's cut the rebates. Okay, there we go. Sometimes the only thing you can do is whip together a quick jig. So let's get the rest of this done. Okay guys, so we have our rebates in top and bottom. And like I said, these are our sides and our ends combined. So we just wanna cut the ends off this now. I think I'm gonna make the width of this pencil case roughly 80 millimeters. So I'm just gonna mark that here. That should allow plenty of length inside in it for the pencils and say a sharpener and a, an eraser or whatever. So we make it 80 mil in length. So we wanna square that across there. We'll do the same on this one. Now I've already taken these pieces to the shooting board and squared up these ends, so I know the ends are good and square. So we'll just mark this one at 80 millimeters again. Square that off. Now we'll chop the ends off and we'll miter all our corners and we'll get this fitting together nice and square. Okay, let's get our ends cut off. I just wanna stay inside my line. Again, I'll be squaring up these on the uh, shooting board, so. <laughs> off for now. It's a side and an end, we'll keep them together. And this is a side and an end. Lovely. Okay guys, so I've just set up my box roughly to where it's gonna go and I've just numbered all the corners so I can see what goes where and it looks like the green is continuous the whole way around the box, which is just a nice little touch. So nice and simple. So now we wanna miter all these corners. We're gonna do that with our miter jig. Let's do that. Okay, so we're set up with our miter jig. Now I have full videos on making all these jigs. I have a woodworking jigs video, so if you wanna check that out, you'll see how I made all this. It's just a simple box at a 45 degree angle, so it holds our piece at 45 degrees to our plane. We have a fence that we can put to, so we keep it square, and we can just put little miters in the end of our pieces. So nice and easy. What I'm gonna do is just establish a miter in the end of each piece and then we'll make sure that the dimensions are exact on all pieces. Okay, 
you guys, now that I have nice little miters on all my corners, I just want to make sure my components are dimensioned the exact same. So I'm just going to line up the two ends of my miters absolutely perfectly on the top. Keep that pressed against the fence. And then we'll just bring the two edges down here perfectly in line with each other. There we go. That's the two of those. Now for our ends. And they're more or less perfect already, so we don't have much to take off them. Now, we should be good to go to assemble our box. So let's have a look. Okay guys, there's our box. All looking nice, our miters are nice and tight, and everything is good and square, so that works nicely. Nice and simple concept. Now that we have our box assembled, we can measure the depth of our rabbit either side, and we know the dimension that we need to make the bottom of our box now. So let's get on and prepare our bottom piece, and then we can make the lid. Okay guys, so now that our box is more or less assembled, we can get the dimensions, like I said, for our base and our lid. Now we have a decision to make here, whether or not to make the base out of hard wood or use a manufactured timber products, such as plywood MDF or some sort of hard board. Now, if we make it out of hard wood, the same as the size of the box, we have to allow for the expansion of this wood. So timber is very, very stable up and down. So up and down the length of the tree, but it expands and contracts across the grain. So it's like a series of straws. If you imagine a bundle of straws all tied together, they're very, very hard to compress, but you can expand them and pull them across. So as moisture gets into wood and you have seasonal uh, moisture variations within your house, this will expand and contract. So if we're gonna put this into that rebate, we have to allow a gap either side of a couple of millimeters to allow for the expansion and contraction of this. That's a nice kind of delicate little box and that will blow itself apart if we don't allow any expansion room. So I think what we will do is actually put a hardwood base in it, make it nice and pretty, and we'll use a hardwood for the top as well. So we're gonna to have to allow for our expansion. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so I have our base marked out here now. Now the internal dimensions of my box is 65 millimeters plus I have a four mil rebate either side. So that's an extra eight mil. So that would take me up to 73 millimeters. Now I've measured this at 70. So it's gonna be three millimeters short. So we'll have a millimeter and a half either side which gives us a total of say three meter, millimeters of expansion. Hopefully that should be enough. And we can put a rebate all around the edge of this and slot it in. We don't have to worry about up and down. Like I say, along the length, wood is very stable. It's not stable along its width. It's gonna expand this way. It's not gonna expand much this way. So we can make uh, the length, the exact length it needs to be, but we need to make the side a couple of mil short so that we allow room for expansion. So I get on and cut this out now and just put a rebate all around it. It's exactly the same as putting the rebate on the inside, so I won't bore you guys with that. I get on, do that, and when that's done, I get back, we'll assemble the box and I'll show you what we mean. Okay guys, there's our bottom piece made, so just cut it out, squared it up, and just put a rebate all around it. Now it's like I say, it's three millimeters short than the actual width of a box, including the rebate. So it has some room to expand. Now, also something to remember is you need to leave your shoulder line back from the edge as well, because if the shoulder line butts up against this edge, then uh, this part of the timber can't expand either because the shoulder is going to catch the edge of your box and that'll push your box apart. So you need to leave a gap on your shoulder the whole way around. But as long as you keep that consistent the whole way around, that can actually be just a little decorative feature. And if you want, you can put a little chamfer on this as well, just for another little decorative feature. Um, but I'm going to leave it as a nice crisp square line all the way around. So. Again, if you're going to use hardwood from the bottom and not plywood or something like that, allow for expansion, otherwise your box could end up in pieces. Okay, let's get on now and start getting this assembled. Now we need to cut off the front uh, rabbit of the front of our box because our lid is going to slide in through there. Let's do that. Okay guys, our lid and our base is in place. Now, make the lid the exact same way as you make the base. You just make the rebate on the side a little bit deeper so it slides easier in the box. Now, what we want to do here is, obviously we need to cut this guy off so that we can slide our lid in and out, but we want to maintain the look of the box. So we want to glue the piece we cut off to our lid so we can use that for pulling in and out. And when the box is closed, it should look exactly like that and you can't actually see how to open it, uh, everything working out well. So I'm going to cut this now and then I'm going to re-glue it to the lid. So let's get on and do that. Okay, we're going to cut this top of the box off. Now I'm going to use the edge of the rebate as a guide to make sure we get a nice clean straight cut. that and then we want to take this piece and glue it onto our lid so that it looks like the box is closed. 
Okay guys, so the next job we want to do is get the box all glued up. And when that's all set up, then we can set up this lid. So we want to keep these two pieces, put them aside, make sure we don't lose them. Now, we also want to make sure that we don't glue our base into our box because we want that to expand. So we want that free floating inside in that rebate. So just some glue on the miters and uh, we'll get this clamped up. Just want to take care that we don't get too much glue in that rebate. If we get a small bit of glue in there, it's not the end of the world. It'll still have uh, room to move and expand. We just don't want to make sure we don't catch it all the way along its width. Okay guys, we are all glued up, we'll let that set up. Um, we are perfect corner to corner. So if you ever wanna just check that you're square, just make sure you're exact corner to corner, which I am. So that's happy days. So we can leave that now for a little while, let that set up, and when the glue sets up, we'll come back and we'll fit the lid and get a finish on this. So our box is all glued up and our lid is working nicely. So again, nice and loose. We have to allow for that lid to expand as well as the base. And the base is in there and it's not fixed in place. And like I say, it's only a nice, nice little pencil case. So gluing up those miter joints will be fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. It's not going to take much abuse. But now we want to sort the lid. So we want to get this piece back on so that that matches perfectly up there. And it looks like it's all part of the lid and you can't actually see how the box opens. So let's get this glued on. Okay guys, so we want to get our lid in just like that and we want to get this end piece on so that when everything is closed up, it looks like it's all part of the box and we can't actually see how it opens. Just a nice little touch. So we want to fix that to this. We have a little bit of leeway and a little bit of scope. So what I'm actually going to try and do is glue this, but I'm going to use some brad nails as well that won't be seen. I don't have screws that are small enough or delicate enough for this. So what I'm actually going to do is with like a two mil bit, just drill a couple of holes very carefully just like that be very delicate here now because this is very very thin and small material so get a little bit of glue we'll get those holes to line up we're going to hammer through the brad nails and then we'll cut them flush and Foil them back so they're not actually in the way. So we'll get our glue in there. Get that to sit in. Take our brad nail. Lovely. We just snip them flush. We don't break through. I'll foil them back and that should hold our lid on. So you won't even see them when they're foiled back. So we should be pretty good to go there. And when that glue sets up, it'll really bond that piece anyway. So there we go. That's how we're going to fix that together. Yeah. Lovely. Just foil them flush, nice and smooth. That should be good to go. Okay guys, our box is just about done. The lid is fitting nicely, sliding in and out nice and easy, just like that. Plenty of room for expansion, like I say, in the base and in the lid. Not to do now, just get a little bit of finish on it. So I'm gonna just throw on some of this food safe finish because it's a nice clear odorless finish and I kind of want to keep the natural look at this box. So let's get this on. Spotted Beach is absolutely lovely in there, as you can see. Right guys, so there we go, the finish is all on and that Spotted Beach looks absolutely fantastic with just a natural uh, oil finish, no color in it, just the natural colors of the wood, darkens up lovely with the yellows and the browns, golden colors and a bit of spotting running through, it looks absolutely fantastic. So it's a really nice little pretty pencil case, not to the only get my pens and pencils into it. I can leave this on my desk as an extra little bit of inspiration uh, to draw and just to imagine some nice things. So it's always nice to have, you know, nice little things to look at inside in the house as well. So there you go guys, a pencil case completely made from hand tools. 
right guys, so there we go. A nice little hand tool project all completed. A nice simple one. You guys asked, could I do a nice simple hand tool project? There you go. There are some good things to practice in that between your rebates and your miters and getting everything square, practicing with your shooting board, getting some sawing done, a bit of cross cutting, a bit of ripping. Um, it's all in there. So again, it's a nice little project, nice and simple, not too complicated, just to practice some hand tools. And it's an absolute pleasure just to come out and to make something completely with hand tools. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully it inspires you to go make something and even go have a go at this yourself with your own hand tools in your workshop. So if you like that, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, think about subscribing. If you want to support what I do here, links to everything is below. Thanks to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. Uh, it's really appreciated, guys. So I'm going to get out of here now. I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.